Today I want to talk about one of my favorite patterns in React and that is unstyled components. And to explain it, I have this little demo here. We're looking at this little newsletter signup form. And uh, this is pretty basic. It's just a form with a button, a form that says on submit, and we flip some loading state to true, we wait, and then we flip it back to false. And if I click this button, we'll see it flips over uh, to this little loading spinner to give us some feedback that the form is being submitted. Now, uh, this button has a neat little trick inside of it, and that is the spinner centers itself over the button's contents. And if I were to change this from sign up to sign up today, we're going to see the spinner uh, stays right in the middle of the button no matter what. And the way this works is we can see right here if is loading is true, we are using an absolute position span to render the spinner. And because the button is relative, that's going to keep it right in the middle. Flex, item center, justify center. You've seen this stuff before. So that's the little trick that we're using here. Now, uh, if I pop open the page that's rendering this newsletter, there is another component here called invoice. And let's just say that this is a screen from the same app. So uh, we have, you're about to send an invoice for $300, cancel or send now. And if I click send now, we're going to see it doesn't have that nice little trick where the spinner stays centered over the content of the button. And uh, this causes this kind of ugly layout shift. And it just makes this screen feel a lot less polished than the other one did. So it sure would be nice if we could get this code from uh, the newsletter sign up and reuse it over here in our invoice screen so that we don't have this layout shift. So um, how might we do that? Well, uh, your first instinct here might be to say, well, We've got a blue button and we've got this yellow button right here. Let's add maybe flex, flex call gap four. So we can see these both. And we've got two buttons in this app. Let's go ahead and extract a button component and so that we can share this code. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna make a button.tsx. Let's come back and just look at the newsletter for now. And this will export default function button. And over in the newsletter, I'm going to grab this whole button right here and return this. So we need an is loading prop. And this is a Boolean. And we need the spinner as well. And we're going to want this to come from the parent. This is going to be children, just like that. So let's also go ahead and add children, which is a React node. So uh, we'll import that. Let's come back to our newsletter and let's go ahead and render our button. And this is gonna take sign up. And it also needs uh, an is loading prop. So let's say is loading is equal to this is loading state right up here in the newsletter. So uh, that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and comment this out. And okay, there we go. We've got our button and it seems to be working. So let's go ahead, come back to our page, render our invoice, and uh, let's go ahead and try to switch out this button right here with the button we just made. So this is right here. This is gonna be button. It's gonna say send now and is loading is going to be, this guy's is loading, just like that. Okay, so we have this send now, it's yellow, and we want it to be blue. So let's go ahead and grab these styles, and we're gonna need to be able to customize this, uh, maybe with something like a color prop. So maybe we want this to be color blue, and maybe we want this over in the newsletter to be color yellow. So I've got those styles in my clipboard, they're right here. Um, let's go ahead and pull these out into a class names object. And this will have blue and yellow. And I'll just grab all of these. These are the yellow ones. And then these are the blue ones right here. And if I save this, we should see a button with no styles. And that's because we don't have a color prop this is going to be blue or yellow. And now we can just pass in the class names 
for the given color. Check that out. We got a blue button. And if we click send now, well, we don't see anything. And that's because it looks like we forgot a relative class that we needed for that spinner to actually work for its absolute positioning to take effect. But now check this out. This is so cool. We have a blue button. We can say send now. And if we come back to our page and try the newsletter, sign up still works. Let's go ahead and try to change the children here button. Send now, send immediately. And uh, you can see we have that nice positioned behavior. So uh, this is pretty cool. We have a little button component right here. And um, now we have that loading spinner behavior everywhere we need it. Uh, but there's something wrong with this approach. There's something I really don't like about this path that we've gone down. And uh, the thing that I don't like about it is that our button now not only has our loading behavior but it also has all of our styles so what if i were to come here and want to make a new button on some new screen that says some action um, let's go ahead and import that but now i'm on a new screen and i want this button to be green uh, so what do i do well we have a color prop but color can only be blue and yellow so i guess i'm going to add a new green color and then how do I actually implement this? Well, now I have to jump to this button and I guess we're going to come down here and add green and then I'm going to start styling them here. And we've lost uh, this co-location of our Tailwind classes and all of the specific code for this green button um, with the page where it's rendered. We now have to jump to this new abstraction that we made every time we want to make a change. And this co-location of all of our code that's related to what we're working on is one of the best parts of React. And the real problem here is that we have made a premature abstraction. And what is premature about this abstraction? It's the fact that this button component doesn't just contain the loading logic that we wanted to share between our newsletter and our invoice form. It also contains styles and a bunch of other stuff. So this is a premature abstraction. Uh, if every time we use this button in a new part of our app, we have to come and change it over and over again, that's a sign that there's a high degree of coupling between our usage and the implementation. And this kind of thing makes apps a pain to work on. It makes it hard to follow. You have to open a bunch of files. Um, this is not a good path to go down. So what do we want to do instead? Well, let's actually come back and just delete this button. Come back to our page. Get this newsletter going again and let's just undo all of this and get back to our original button and that looks good let's go ahead and make sure our invoice is good as well we'll go ahead and undo all this and uh, now kind of we're back to square one we've got this invoice button that doesn't work the way we want it to but we have this newsletter one that does and uh, if we take a look at this button right here we can see everything that's going on. And what we want to share with our invoice component is just the loading UI, just the loading spinner behavior and as little else as possible. No styles, nothing else. And this is a perfect use case for unstyled React components. So let me show you how this works. Uh, I'll just do this right here in our newsletter file. I'll move this up to the top. And let's go ahead and come down here. And let's just make a button right here. And in fact, because this button is just about sharing that loading behavior, let's actually call this a loading button. So what should a loading button render? Well, it needs to render a button and it needs children. Uh, but we don't just want children. If we squint at this, this is kind of all the markup we need to support. And then we'll just slot children in right here, kind of like we did with the first button. So let's go ahead and grab this come here and uh, let's go ahead and slot this children in right here and it looks like we're going to need that is loading prop again which makes sense because this is a loading button so is loading is a boolean and now if we come up here we should be able to delete all of this code right here and right here just keep the children and change this to loading button We'll see class name does not exist right now. Let's ignore that for a second. And let's just go ahead and pass our is loading flag 
uh, just like that. So if we save this, we see uh, our sign up today button. It doesn't look much like a button. And when we click it, uh, this spinner is way up here. So that tells me we probably forgot uh, this relative class that we need to have on our button. That relative class is basically part of the structure, the logic that's needed for the loading spinner to work. So we should bake that into our loading button right here. And if we do, now we see the spinner. And uh, it just doesn't look very much like a button anymore. That's because our caller is passing in the class name, but we're not using it yet. And this is what we mean by unstyled React components. This component is unstyled, so the caller needs to bring all their styles. You don't get any styles out of the box. So why don't we actually just pass through this class name prop. This is a string. And uh, we just want to slot this right onto the button. But we also want to keep this relative class because the caller might not have passed that. In fact, let's go ahead and just delete this just to kind of make sure. And um, class name is going to be an expression here. And we'll just interpolate class name just like that. So now we see a yellow button. We see the loading behavior. And if I were to change sign up to today to just sign up, everything is working just like before. But the cool thing about this is if I were to comment out these classes, we go back to an unstyled button. Or if I wanted to change this to a green button, now I can do it. And I can do it all from my calling site right here without having to change anything about loading button. And everything still works. So this is the power of unstyled React components in that they can help you avoid jumping to the wrong abstraction too early. It's a really powerful pattern and um, it, it comes up in so many areas in my React work. But we're not quite done. We see we have type uh, is not defined because it doesn't exist on our props right here. So this is TypeScript helping us out, telling us that you know our caller is trying to render a loading button with a type attribute. We're not doing anything with it. So we could come here and do the same thing and add you know type and then add all the other attributes that might be on a button. But uh, there's a nice helper type that comes with React called component props, which we can use alongside this spread syntax to just get every other uh, attribute or prop that might be passed into our button. And so how do we type rest? Well, this is kind of our whitelisted types right here. And then we want to combine these with component props for a button. And check this out right here in our implementation i can say rest this is just like the rest of the props that were passed in i can hit dot and then i can see all the valid properties <laughs> form form action all of this stuff that um, you can ever pass to a regular old button element and so now we have these typed i can come here to button and i can splat rest onto them just like that and now TypeScript is telling us it's okay that I'm setting the type property. And if we were to open up uh, the inspector here and check this out, we're going to see type submit made it to our actual DOM. So uh, this is pretty cool. You know, you have all on mouse down, on mouse enter, full autocomplete for everything on your loading button. But this loading button is unstyled, which means uh, if we go ahead and pull this out into a loading button component, And let's go ahead and grab all these imports. Sometimes when I do this, I like to just grab all the imports and then run organize imports. And it kind of just cleans everything up, makes it easy to migrate things to another file. And now we can do the same thing, organize imports, and then come down to loading button and import it. And now we've got a green newsletter button. Uh, but if we were working here, and we wanted to make this amber again. I can just grab these amber. We're back to an amber button without changing anything about loading button. And if we come over to our page, show our invoice. And we're going to see here, we still have that crappy old loading behavior. Let's go ahead and change this button with a loading button. And uh, we don't need to pass this in anymore. Just the label of send now give it an is loading and make sure to close this out. And now 
check this out. We just used our loading button in a brand new spot. All the classes pulled over. All of the other properties are good and auto-completing here and um, we're getting a complete button. So this is just a really simple example of how to use unstyled React components um, to make sure you don't jump into something uh, too early as far as abstractions go. You know, there's nothing wrong with a button component that has something like variant, you know, primary or secondary. You see a lot of these kinds of components in design systems, but the reason these buttons exist is because they are trying to share the design, the sizes and the typography across the app. So the purpose that these buttons solve is enforcing design consistency and making sure that we reuse our shared code. You know, if we had a bunch of blue buttons, we might make one of those. But in this case, we didn't want to share any of the styling code. We just wanted the loading behavior. So understanding unstyled React components is really important for when you hit those moments and you reach for an abstraction, but sometimes you reach for the wrong one and you end up going down this bad path. So there are so many use cases for unstyled components. Um, this is just basically the tip of the iceberg, but they're one of my favorite things to use. I use them all the time in my own apps for things like sharing logic for checkout forms or newsletter signups. And um, there's actually a bunch of other cool patterns in React that kind of fit in the same category of just tools in your tool belt that you might reach for when you run into a situation, you have some code. Oh, hey, I know I have that loading spinner on that one page. I really like to use it here. What do I do? So um, that's why I wanted to share that with you. There's a bunch of other patterns that I'm going to be talking about very soon. And I'm also making a course on it. It's called Advanced React Component Patterns. I'm going to put a link in the description so you can check that out. But that's going to be coming in October. Uh, but otherwise, that's what I wanted to show you today. If you have any questions about unstyled React Components or any other patterns you'd like to see, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.